So please give a very warm welcome to Damien and Mark Smith. This evening, I'm going to do a short 15-minute talk on something called the World Peace Equation. But I'd also like to introduce you to the most powerful force in the universe. It is the force that gave us E equals MC squared. It's the force that gave us the Archimedes principle. It discovered gravity. It even wrote the I have a dream speech. It's a pretty powerful force. And it's been guiding you your entire life. Maybe you've known about it, maybe not. But it's within each one of you. It's also the force that's going to, hopefully, eventually, give us world peace. Because peace, peace, is what is left when everything else is removed. It's hiding in plain sight, waiting for you to find it. So why is the world in such a state? Why do we do bad things to each other? When actually, if you ask anyone, if you gave them three wishes, if you gave them a genie and a lamp, and you gave them three wishes, and you said, what are your three wishes? You can have anything in the world. Usually, the first one is world peace. Because there's no point in having the other two unless you have world peace. So if everyone wants it, why haven't we got it? Surely you would think, if there's enough positive thinking in the world, that if we all wanted world peace, it would happen. The reason we don't have world peace is because there is a very simple misunderstanding about how the human mind works. Six years ago, I suffered from OCD, depression, anger issues. I had all the trappings of, of luxury and wealth. I lived in uh, Buckinghamshire with uh, two kids and a nice five-bedroom house, and yet I was desperately unhappy, desperately miserable. But I, I was told that I should be happy because I had everything that I was told would make you happy, but I wasn't happy. And then by chance, maybe by fate, I heard some words that changed my world and have helped me help the unhelpable. And what I mean by that is I've helped people and I have no counseling experience. I'm not a psychotherapist. I'm not a psychoanalyst. I've never even studied psychology. And I've managed to help people who've been so desperately depressed, suicidal, unhappy, written off. One lady, in, in one lady's case, in therapy for 28 years to have freedom from their own thinking by having a conversation about how thought works. And I'm going to do a demonstration for you just to show you how your thinking works tonight. And that will point you in the right direction. Because if you are pointed in the right direction as a result of this short talk, it's enough to set you on your journey. So I want every, each and every single one of you just to shut your eyes. Just shut your eyes. And just think about where your experience is coming from right now. Where is your experience coming from right now? It's often easier when we do this, when we shut our eyes. Some of you will be thinking it's coming from my words. Some of you will be thinking it's coming from the venue. Some of you will be thinking it's coming from hearing the person next to you. But actually, it's none of those things. OK, open your eyes. Because each and every single one of you has just had a different experience. No two people in this room just had the same experience. How can that be true? And yet it is. It's actually quite logical. It's because your experience was coming from your thinking. Your experience was just coming from your thinking. And it always does. The world peace equation is actually a very simple equation. It's the following. T equals F. T equals F. Thought equals feeling. 
whatever thought you put in is the same feeling you get out. Imagine a tea bag being dipped into a hot cup of water. Hot tea bag. Tea bag goes in. The flavor of the tea is the same as the tea bag. Whatever thought goes through your head, you get a feeling attached to that thought. Now, what's interesting about when you start to see this will explain why I was so unhappy when I had everything that supposedly makes you happy. Because my happiness could never come from my circumstances. Because that's not how it works. Happiness does not come from fast cars and big houses and six-figure jobs. Happiness comes from within. It's an inside job. You create your version of reality from moment to moment to moment to moment to moment via your thinking. It's what Sid Banks called the missing link. The only problem is, it happens so fast, you miss it. Thought creates the world and then says, I didn't do it. Your experience can only come from your thinking in the moment. And what's so great about this equation is it's balanced. T equals F. It always does. It's always balanced. And when you see this, and when you start to understand this, something else happens. Because your experience no longer comes from your circumstances, you don't have to control your circumstances to change your feelings. Which is why I can speak to a young lady who was gang raped in a war in Africa. And she can feel humility and love for her attackers. That's the power right there. That's wisdom. That's insight. That's love. All the good stuff. And we have access to it 24-7. It's also what's eventually going to bring us peace on earth. Because peace is in here. Peace is in here. And every single one of you can be at peace, no matter what your circumstances are on the outside. So, for the rest of my time, I'm going to start pointing people back in this direction. You're living in the feeling of your thinking, you have wisdom. You're living in the feeling of your thinking, you have wisdom. You're living in the feeling of your thinking. You have wisdom. And I've had a lot of conversations with people that really were written off, and they've began to heal as a result of hearing that. I've written a book called Do Nothing. There's a reason I say do nothing. There is nothing to do. You already have wisdom. You already have peace. You already have everything you need. You perhaps just don't see it yet. The hardest question I was ever asked was, if your happiness doesn't come from your circumstances, so in other words, if, if, your, uh, if your feelings are always a result of your thoughts, how do you explain people in war zones? Now, my answer to that question was very simple. In a war zone, on any given day, there are feelings of hatred, despair, loss, but there's also feelings of love, humility, and hope. There is no one size fits all. And if any of you know Viktor Frankl, you'll understand that he went in the uh, concentration camps in, in Auschwitz, and he saw this. It's created within. It's never circumstance related. Okay, so your perception, so where the question was, where do you put perception and sensation? So um, a perception is a thought, and the sensation is the feeling. Yeah? In any given circumstance, you will have, a, so for instance, you could have a thought about something that isn't, doesn't even, is not even happening, but you'll get the feeling as if that thought is true. And there could be things going on right now that are not in your thinking, and even though they're happening, they're not in your reality because you're not having a thought about them. 
In the book, Do Nothing, I talk about a condition called congenital analgesia, congenital insensitivity to pain. And it's a, a malfunction of the SCN9A gene. And that gene basically means that the people that, are, uh, that have, have the condition do not feel pain. They do not have the thought telling them that pain exists. So they can put their hands in pots of boiling water and they can bite their tongues off uh, because they don't have the thought telling them that there's pain. Unless you have the thought about it, you don't have the feeling and it, you don't have the experience. You don't have that reality. The reason I call the book Do Nothing is there is nothing you have to do. You don't have to make the weather change. When it's raining outside, you don't have to do anything with the weather. Eventually, the clouds will clear and the sun will reappear. So when I was uh, dealing with my own OCD and depression and stress and anxiety, I was told to change my thinking. Well, that's, that's lovely if you can do that. If you can change your thinking, well, that's great. But for most people that I've ever met, it's very hard to change your thinking because you don't get control over the next thought that comes into your head. However, if you see that it's just thinking and you don't have to act upon your thinking, that changes everything. As soon as I saw that I didn't have to believe my thinking just because it was thinking, I had thoughts that told me I was depressed and I felt depressed. But then other times I had thoughts that told me I was happy and I felt happy. I didn't have to do anything with the depressed thoughts because new thinking always comes in and replaces old thinking. It's actually when we try and do something with it, we're slowing down the process as if we could change the weather. So when people say, you've got to control your thinking or have you tried to change your thinking? I always just ask them the question, why bother? Why? Just let your thinking do its natural thing. Let the system take care of you. The system is designed to be kind. This is the insight. This is the wisdom that I'm referring to. Wisdom is there. It's always there. It's only ever one thought away. I use the example of the Nairobi shopping hijack, where terrorists who were killing families, they were killing women and children. So whatever thinking was going through these people's heads seemed real enough for them that they thought that killing people would actually uh, change their state or would make them better or, or happier or whatever. That's what they believed. They had thinking that they thought was true. And they thought it was so powerful that they would kill women and children to do this. And yet one of the attackers who had just shot this woman, a young boy called Elliot Pryor, who was four years old, stepped out in front of one of the attackers and, stead, and said, stop shooting, you're a very bad man. This terrorist, who can only have been having insanity thinking at the time, or what we would consider insanity thinking, connected to wisdom, connected back to love, and said, please forgive us, we are not monsters. Gave him chocolate and set him free. That's the power of the most powerful force in the universe. And it's one thought away from everyone. It's why insight is something that will help you in your life, but you can't think your way to it. You can't think your way to new thinking, and you don't need to. So I now spend my life helping people, the unhelpable, writing books about the unsolvable, and you never know. If everyone heard it, if it was taught in schools in the same way that E equals MC squared is, T equals F. 50 years from now, we might all be at peace.